an alien invasion. Is it biblical? Of course it is. Clearly I'm not here today as a fact witness. You can Google it. I think you just use the Bible, do whatever the hell you like. Just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Welcome to Mystery Bible Theater 3000. My name is Caleb Haig. With me, of course, my lovely assistant to Mr. Rob Van Hoff. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Doing well. Looking Wait. forward to our Mystery Bible Theater this week. Yes, we missed last week, both of our shows last week, due to me being uh, ill. And uh, the whole family's just had a run of it, so... Anyway, well, you're looking good, I must say, right now. Thank you. I'm getting over it. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, what are we gonna do today? I got a, I got a special one for you. This is, uh, <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, once again from, uh, from I think our new employee is what we should call her, Stephanie. Stephanie uh, spends most of her time taking care of little girls uh, and uh, homeschooling little girls. But when she's not homeschooling little girls, she is uh, searching during nap time. During, During nap time, she is searching for uh, for, <laughs> for videos for us. Um, actually, in this in the when she emailed this to me, she she left a note. Let's let's see if I can find this here real quick. Um, I love finding all the crazies for you guys. I wish I could find more. My kids will walk into the room and ask, "Is this a nut job for Mister Caleb?" Awesome. I <laughs> 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 love it. Love it. All right. Well, uh, she has found another one. And of course, uh, you know, not to be outdone by anyone else. Uh, she certainly does find the crazy. Now, some people might not find this to be crazy because here's the thing is that this is what I'm starting well, to realize. Because we're mean. Well, you all, here's, here's what I'm realizing is that for every person that we find, you know, a lot of the time, the people that we're looking at have huge, huge followings. So, for instance, Kenneth Copeland, the reason that Kenneth Copeland can buy a $46 million jet is because people have sent him $46 million. Exactly. <laughs> and not only that, they get, you have to have a, where do you put it? You have to think of all the expenses. He doesn't fly it. He's got to have a pilot, airplane mechanic, like doesn't this these, remind you all the back, all the infrastructure. It reminds me a lot of like... Israel throughout its time, you know, like even in the eight, 17, 1800s, you know, you have the Baal Shems, the, the, the masters of the name, right? And, and, you know, Israel is supposed to be following God and his Torah, and the Torah tells them specifically not to listen to people who are doing, you know, charms and spells and necromancy and magic and all this kind of stuff. Yet, they're like, they're, they're like hungry for, like Israel's hungry at that point for like, I don't know if it's like a, a, a more in your face, like Yeshua says, right? Like you, uh, they, uh, you ask for a sign. Like, isn't that, isn't that almost poetic, right? The, the trust is in the rabbis. Yeah. But the, lo- the trust the living, is not in the word of God. The living, it's, it's, it, it's the rabbis are the leaders and you trust them. The living God is standing in front of them and they're asking him for a sign. Right. I mean, like, isn't that, that's poetic, but but I guess the point is that like we don't get away from it in Christianity. Within the Christian Church, you have, and today even more so in America, I would say that 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 the the people who are willing to follow the complete nut job far outweigh the people who are willing to you know want to sit and listen to the meat of the text. And I think that this is one of the reasons that uh, you know biblical literacy within our within our time, even among Christians, is just so poor. Um, so you have people who you know instead of wanting to live a righteous life, and maybe they do want to you know maybe maybe I shouldn't put people down like that. Maybe they do want to live a righteous life, but they feel like they are so beat down by society or by money troubles or whatever that they want to believe, and so. To do that, it's like, and obviously we're talking about like, like Copeland is the one in the in the front of the mind because that's who we mentioned. But like, if I give ten dollars, I'll get a hundred dollars. It's like the magic. It's like the. It's like you caught the leprechaun at the end of the rainbow. 
or you found the you know or you found the the Persian uh, you know lamp to rub. And God is the God is the leprechaun or, or God is the genie that's going to pop out. He's going to give you everything you want. Now, the video that we're going to watch is, is I don't know who this person is. I don't know if he's a, a, you know, a prosperity gospel guy or not. But the language that he uses here, I think, is along the same veins as what we're talking about. Let's click kick over here and let's watch this video. This is, this is something that, you know, I will, I'll tell you, after watching this video, I went on a little bit of a, a rabbit hunt online looking for language. The same kind of language that's used in this uh, video. Uh, okay. So we'll talk about that. This is only 22 seconds long, by the way. 22 okay, seconds. Cool. So we got a short one here. And uh, we'll let it play all the way through on this one. How do you get God to work in your life? Okay, so whoever edited this, by the way, did a horrible job. And the reason why is because the music is too loud uh, to hear what he said in the beginning. Let's listen to it. It's up on the screen. How do you get God to work in your life? How do you get God to work in your life is what he just said, okay? So here, how do you get God to work in your life? Sounds like a guy who's read the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start it again. Fourth time's the charm. How do you get God to work in your life? How do you activate God's miracle power? God said... I have linked my creative, miraculous power inseparably to the words that you speak into your life. Okay, I don't know what Bible he's reading. Let me just read you the text that comes up. This is what he said. How do you get God to work in your life? First of all, God is constantly working in your life. And the fact that you woke up this morning and are breathing air shows that God is working in your life. So the Hebrews I, one, he upholds all things by the word of his power. Exactly. So the the notion that we have to somehow get God to work in our life goes back to this mentality of the genie in the bottle. If I rub it, if I rub this lamp, the genie is going to pop out and give me my three wishes. And so what I want to do is I want to activate God's power in my life by rubbing the 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 lamp, and then I get my three wishes. This is this is the same. This is the theology that this dude is is playing on. So this is what he says. How do you get God to work in your life? <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. How do you activate God's miracle power? And this is what I looked up. Why didn't why didn't the prophet Jeremiah do this when when <laughs> the Babylonians were coming to destroy the why Solomon's didn't, temple? Why didn't, uh, how why come didn't, the prophets didn't just use this guy's video technology? Uh, this uh, what do you call it? Why this theology? Didn't, why didn't Paul do this when he was getting was about to get stoned? Uh, by the Jews in the synagogue. What happens? The Jews stone him. They leave him for dead. And then the apostles gather around them and they're like, yo, he's dead, <laughs> right? And he's like, uh, no, he's not dead. Well, why didn't he just activate God's miracle power at that point? This is such nonsense. This is such BS, bad scholarship. It's, it's, just it's just so okay it's it's bad theologically of course but to me there's a kind i don't know if it's cruelty or or just snake oil snaking you know snakiness I that you're 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 trying to not you I mean he's what do they call that praying on the weak praying on the vulnerable the i see this in in one of two ways I see this in one of two ways. A, he's doing exactly what you're saying. He's fleecing people. And in that fleecing, what he's doing is he is attempting to get money, power, whatever it may be, a name for himself. He's obviously on a stage, right? He's got people giving him money somewhere. So maybe that's it. Maybe that's what maybe that maybe it stops there. Or and, and I think that this is really what it is. And the reason why is because you have so many people teaching this, this nonsense in America and throughout the world. But I think what it is is that these people really believe it. And I think what has happened is these people have taken the self-help guru idea of speak it into existence, say it and proclaim it, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? They've taken all this stuff. They've created a God. It's not the God of the Bible, but they've taken texts from the Bible and they've manipulated them into 
to fit the God that they have created. So they've taken a God, a God outside of the Bible. They've put the names of, of the true God onto that God, which Satan loves, by the way, right? Satan loves this. They have then tried to take various texts, completely uh, neglecting all the other, <laughs> the rest of the Bible. They've thrown it on there and made it into a self-help whatever. And now you have a God. And who's the God? I, I think that the God is either them or, or itself. And, and uh, we've said this many times on our various shows. I think that the biggest God that is worshipped in America is self, right? I create the God that is myself, and then I worship myself, and I, it's all pleasure for me. I get everything I want. If I'm, you know, if I'm in sin... I, I make God to be okay with that sin. So hence, you know, things like homosexuality, transgenderism, all these things are becoming accepted in the church. Why? Because it fits myself instead of fits God. Like the it's real almost, God. Okay, it's almost like this. Think of the golden calf, like retelling of the golden calf. So Moses is on his way back down and he's pissed, <laughs> right? And he sees them all dancing and worshiping the golden calf. And what have they done? They've said, this is your God, O Israel, who delivered you from Egypt, right? right? Like they've totally hijacked the truth and put it on this golden calf. But then, but the uh, the idolaters, Israelites, they've actually created a, a like a, a border patrol that won't let Moses into, into the camp. <laughs> so Moses is the prophet who's outside Hey, like, hey you guys. This. And they're like, they're like, you don't belong here. You're trying, you know, yeah. and they're actually preventing stopping their ears against the word of the prophets. Right. That That is correcting them. We're like, no, we are. This is what we want. This is right. Our, right. Um, and that's scary, man. Oh, so as it says in Romans one, you know, he gave, he gave them over to the, their, what does it say to their lust, to their, their foolish hearts were darkened, you know, that whole... Uh, the, the the language that is used here by this man, and the, I, the, who is this guy? Have uh, we listened to the whole thing yet? Yes. Jensen oh, Franklin. The, the, the language that is used here shows that he is worshiping self. And the reason why is because I don't activate anything, first of all. Second of all, I don't need to activate God's power. Oh. As as followers of Christ, what we do is we are servants. We are slaves to Christ. It is now Christ who lives in us, and therefore we are beholden to what he wants. I don't have to activate anything in my life. What I have to do is serve the Lord, right? Is, is activation a key word in... Is that used by other prosperity gospels, so or is that more of a New Age term being used? A, so to activate. So what I put into Google was activate God's power. And how, I mean, you wouldn't believe how to activate God's power in your life. There's one must watch how to activate the power of God, how to activate God's power in your life. These are all different videos, by the way. Kenneth Copeland, wait, wait. wait, Kenneth Copeland's number one on his blog, four ways to activate the spirit of power. A different one, 10 ways to activate the power of God in your life. Charisma Magazine, five simple keys to activating God's power in your life. This is divination. This is this oh, is so man. anti-Bible. It's, it's unbelievable. And what it shows is that people don't care about being a servant to Christ. What they care about is how do I get what I want? If your religious experience is how do I get what I want, then you're serving a God that is not the God of the Bible. That's God right. God will bless you, but probably not in the way that you want him to. Not in the way that you think he's going to bless you. You know, when, when Lakeisha and I got married, the, the, we would walk around, we'd hear kids screaming, and, and I remember one very specific time. We were in a restaurant, there was a kid screaming in a booth, a couple, couple booths down, right? And I said, I am so happy we don't have that. And she said, I cannot imagine ever having, like, that I don't want it. I can't imagine having to deal with it. And I'm very happy that we don't have children. That's what she said. About a month and a half later, we found out we were pre pregnant, right? So the blessings have not stopped. We get, now have four kids, right? And <laughs> now, looking back in retrospect, God knows what we need, right? At the time, we would have said, man, mm -hmm. I never, we, we don't want that. 
But God's blessing on us was something that was totally the opposite of what we thought we wanted. And this is how things go. You know, you think that you you think you want X, Y, Z. Chances are you're probably not going to get it from God. What you're going to get is something different that's going to bless you in a completely yeah, different way. Yeah, I mean, way. it reminds me at the end of John where, where Yeshua tells Peter, you know, when you were young, you know, you dressed up, you went wherever you wanted to go. But in the future, someone's going to tie you up and take you where you don't want to go. Exactly. And it's like, man, I mean, I can't read that without it just being like a, like this is to follow Yeshua means you take up your cross and you follow him daily. There's no, there's, it's such an affront to the gospel of Messiah. You know what I mean? It's, it, it is, I think you're right. It's, it is this, like, I think the genie analogy is such a good, it helps people, hopefully people who haven't been sure about this kind of teaching that they'll be able to see that more clearly now, you know, I don't know how many people who watch our videos are, would even be tempted or interested in that kind of preaching, but I'm sure they've encountered it. I haven't encountered it so much in my local life. It's more on the TV, like the, uh, the TV or, or, uh, now on YouTube kind of thing, preachers. Um, but this idea of activation it's just a it's it's just a strange word and it, it does it it does put it like it's like rub the lamp you know so I'm, but in I, all I, cases do they, is there a you know is there a send me money as part of the thing like in other words activate the power of god in your life send me money to make that happen kind of thing i mean I, I don't, so I don't I'm know, on. It's just strange. I, I, I just happened. I, to, I just happened upon this this blog post. This is by. Is this by that dude? Jaron Ferguson, is that was that his name? No, different guy. Anyway, this is the biblical foundation. Is the name of this blog? How to activate God's healing power step by step. And of course, there's all these, you know, the scriptures that are taken in interesting ways. Step one, you must be born again. <clears throat> Step two, you must be. Well, wait, okay. Well, did you. How... Okay, I'll do that. Where do I get that? <laughs> How much does that cost? Or, or like, do I have to go? Do I have to be somewhere at a certain day? Like, what? How? Step two, and this here you go. You must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. What does that mean to these people? That you speak in tongues? It means, speak, it means you need to, yeah. You know. Step three, you must pray in faith for the sick to be healed. And step four, take risks. Man, sounds like a pretty pretty good, they got it locked down, don't they? They got, they got it figured out. You know, the Kabbalists do the same thing. The, the Jewish Kabbalists, the mystics do the same thing. They have step by steps. You do this, you're going to be put into a trance. You'll be able to heal people. You'll be able to go into this, you know, seven heavens uh, and and experience God. And it's demonic. And in my opinion, I think that this comes from a place of darkness. This is not of this is not of the of the Lord. This is and which is why people like Kenneth Copeland, who I maintain is demon possessed, continue to push it is because I think that they are fleecing the flock and I think doing... it's like a Balaam. It's a Balaam. Oh, yeah. It's someone who has, you know, Balaam, it's like, yeah, he has knowledge about God, you know, and he's got people convinced that he's an authority. Yep. But in the end, what happens? Balaam's get slaughtered along with all the other, you know. Yeah, it's scary. All right. With Balak I... and all the others. So yeah, it's wow. Let's cut it there. All right, if you have videos that you want to us to uh, look at on Mystery Bible Theater 3000, send them to chegg at torresource.com, C-H-E-G-G at torresource.com. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be back next week with another one of these videos. Uh, don't forget to check out our regular show, Wednesdays, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time on YouTube. And we will see you in the next video.